Hello there children, it's Mr Yardsley, come to read another story, this time for our year one children. Hope you had a lovely weekend, it was quite sunny out wasn't it from time to time. Hope you managed to get some time in the sun for yourselves and that you're all well. The story I'm going to read today is called Tom and the Land of the Dinosaurs. Let's have a little look. wonder how Tom gets to the Land of the Dinosaurs, can you see? What's one of these called? Can you see the dinosaurs? There was once a boy called Tom who lived with his grandfather in an old lighthouse at the edge of the sea. Between them, Tom and his grandfather took care of the lighthouse. On stormy days and moonless nights, they would light the lamp to show passing ships where the rocks were. They are there. The lighthouse. Shining out to sea. On sunny days, they'd go fishing together and Tom's grandfather would tell him wonderful stories of faraway lands and sea monsters. Tom loved his grandfather and the lighthouse very much, but sometimes he longed to sail the wide grey seas in search of adventure. One day, Tom saw something glinting amongst the wet pebbles on the seashore. Can you see what it is? It was an old bottle chipped and covered with seaweed with a message inside. There's the message. Help! I'm shipwrecked on a faraway island. There are dinosaurs here and a smoking volcano. Please come before it's too late. Help! Thank you, from Katie. Tom rushed home with the message. Oh, poor girl, said his grandfather. She's in terrible trouble. And he looked a bit worried. But what can we do? We can't leave the lighthouse. If a storm blows up, we'll have to light the lamp. Don't worry, grandfather, said Tom. I'll rescue her. There he is. He is getting ready to go. Tom raced down the stairs to fetch the special emergency box. He pushed and pulled and heaved it up the narrow steps to the balcony. He pulled the ripcord and with a rush of wind, the side of the box collapsed and an enormous rescue balloon filled with air. Tom jumped into the basket. There he is saying bye-bye to his granddad. His grandfather gave him a snap for the journey and wished him luck. Be careful, he said, as he let go the tether. Tom's balloon soared up into the sky. As night fell, he drifted across cold seas and sleeping towns. He flew past snow-covered mountains, across wild dark forests, through rainstorms and over waterfalls. At times, the balloon dipped down to touch the waves. Later, it drifted across a great city at dawn. And then, as the sun rose, flew on far, far away. At last, Tom could see the island below him. A ship lay wrecked on the rocks, but there was no sign of Katie or the dinosaurs. Great belches of smoke and fire rose from the volcano. Can you see? He let the balloon drift down through the swirling smoke and fixed the anchor to a tree. He climbed down and he began to look for Katie. Just then he heard someone calling him. It was Katie. She was perched high up in a tree. Quick, Tom shouted. We've got to get out of here. The volcano's about to erupt. We can't go yet, said Katie. Come and have a look at this. Those are the last dinosaurs in the whole world, said Katie. If we leave them here, they'll be killed when the volcano erupts. We've got to save them. But how? asked Tom. Those dinosaurs are too big for my balloon. Luckily, Katie had a plan. First, they collected armfuls 
of enormous flowers. Katie knew the dinosaurs loved to eat the flowers. Then they made huge nets from the rigging on Katie's wreck ship. Tom hung them from the basket of his balloon. All the time the explosion from the volcano got louder and louder. They laid a trail of flowers for the dinosaurs to follow. Can you see? At the water's edge, Katie clambered up into the balloon's basket and threw handfuls of flowers onto the water. The dinosaurs followed swimming. The plan had worked. The seas turned black around them and hot rocks hissed down as the volcano erupted. They got away in the nick of time. Just as the smallest dinosaur was getting too tired to swim, they reached a beautiful island. Then it was time for Tom and Katie to start the long journey home. They said goodbye to the dinosaurs and they set off in the red balloon. But the journey home was not easy. Winds howled round the basket, rain lashed over them, the moon vanished. There was nothing but icy blackness. Ooh, do you think they're going to get back? Just as Tom thought he would never see his grandfather again, a bright light pierced the swirling black clouds. It's the lighthouse, he cried. And as they flew closer, Tom could see his grandfather on the balcony, watching out for him to come home. Yes. Can you see his grandfather waving in the distance? Safe at last. And wrapped in blankets, Tom and Katie drank hot cocoa in front of the fire. Grandfather listened as they told him the wonderful story of the shipwreck, the volcano and res rescuing the last dinosaurs. I wonder what they tell Grandad about how they managed to rescue the last dinosaurs. Can you remember what they had to do and what they did? Can you remember how they found their way back to their grandfather's lighthouse? What did they see that helped them? Children, I hope you enjoyed today's book for year one, children. Remember, we got a saying at Linden Green Infant School. If you see somebody without a smile, give them one of yours. Keep smiling, everybody. Bye-bye. See you soon.